that was an eventful night. What do you think of your first excursion into the unknown, huh? Has it been worth it? What do you mean it would have been worth more if you could have explored the forest longer? You saw what happened. That's it. We won't talk about it. Stop with the giggles and snarky comments or you might get a taste of what happened earlier. I will say, though, I am relieved. You do seem more relaxed than when I first saw you. Albeit I did take the fall for the sake of you smiling again. I'll say it once. It may have been worth it. Maybe. Possibly? Perhaps? Seeing as I may or may not have smited our camping ground back there for very justifiable reasons, might I add, I guess we might need to look for a town nearby to spend the night. Even a roadside inn might do. Why? Because you're a puny little human, that's why. You already saw that I can do a bit more than emotional damage to both spirits and humans alike. You, on the other hand, I don't think you'd last a minute. Or am I wrong? Care to try and land a hit on me? I can't promise I won't fight back. No response, which means I win. <laughs> now let's search for a fancy human in for your weak mortal self before a mosquito bite or a sudden gust of wind unexpectedly ends your oh-so-fragile life. <gasps> what? Dramatic. Me? Never, never. It's unlikely, but not entirely impossible. Just like those forest spirits thought I wouldn't burn the whole forest down. Twice. But, you know, who's counting? Anyway, I'm pretty sure I've seen travelers head in that general direction before, and I don't sense any malicious energy coming from there. So, surely we'll find some place to stay along the way, right? Just please don't faint before we reach our destination. I'd hate to give you the potato sack traveling experience. <laughs> Come on, my pouty human. Let's take advantage of the spiritless daylight hours and try to get you some place to rest. You should have seen the look on your face. Who's laughing now, huh? <laughs> I think I see smoke up ahead. Looks like we'll be staying at an inn. Any complaints? If looks could kill, I'm guessing I'd be dead right now. Because I doubt your feeble arms could get the job done. Still, I congratulate you on the killer intent. Now, let's work towards having a bite to back up that bark, okay? <laughs> fine, fine, I take it back. If anyone attacks us, though, surely your defense mechanism will be to give them the greatest headache possible. That should be simple enough. I can teach you. The geezers back in the spirit realm would always say that my greatest talent of all is to be an annoyance, which... Kind of does make me an ideal mentor for the situation when you think about it. Anyways, sadly, I guess I do have to behave for a while unless I want to get us kicked out, so let me disguise these a bit. Surprised? The ears are still there. I'm just using a charm that blurs them from human sight. Kind of like a curtain of sorts, if you will. They're still there. Just no one will truly notice. As for you, if people are looking for you, I doubt any person in their right mind would chase a bounty through a forest fire. You kind of have to be alive to claim your coin, so this much should be enough at least. Huh. Now, as for who's paying for our stay, have any gold handy? Firstly, where the hell were you hiding that coin bag? And secondly, what is this? A five-star inn with a view? Who gave him the right to charge that much? Look, I understand that the fire may have chased people away from the area, but still, I... Wait, should I just get our money back? No, I don't mean we should find another place to stay. Rather, should I just take our money back? What do you mean, no? Your gold is limited, and you're not earning any more unless we work or steal, so we might as well save what we can. Don't give me that look. It's not like I'm taking a child's candy. 
this guy clearly has money to spare if he has a place like this set up and working smoothly in the middle of nowhere. Besides, it's not like we owe him anything. Fine, anything aside from loss in clientele. And our room fee. And the food. Okay, okay, I get it. It'd be boring and go through with the overpriced stay. I don't care. Heavens, why must you be such a goody two-shoes right now? I know for a fact that you enjoyed chasing those thieves around earlier and scaring them away. That's because they're thieves, you say? What if they were stealing for their families? Gods, don't make that face. They weren't. Only people of ill intent could be found in that place. You didn't do anything wrong. Ugh, you're such a softy. Speaking of stealing, actually, back to the coin bag. Is that the reason you were forced to run away? Stealing gold, or was that from some mysterious secret stash you kept in case of emergencies? More like the latter, huh? Fair enough. Didn't really think you'd be the rule-breaking type considering how firmly and tearfully you advocated for thief rights. <laughs> so, you had that difficult experience you mentioned earlier. But regarding the reason why you're being chased, you still have no clue. Interesting. Kinda feels like a detective game in a way. Although collecting evidence is definitely harder on this side than if we were the pursuers. A few flames could change that. Possibly make the innkeeper a lot more amicable, too. Ow, jeez, I was kidding, it was a goof. Heavens, one would think you'd be able to take a joke. I literally promised I wouldn't earlier. That hit of yours left me a red mark, see? Whatever will I do if it bruises, scars, or leaves a mark? The spirit realm would never accept me back as damaged goods. What do you mean they're better that way, anyways? I'll have you know my humor was what kept that geezer house alive and kicking, thank you very much. Jeez. I thought you were a tired, fragile little human, but it looks like you had some leftover spite in that tank. Now that it's been all used up, though. Yep. I yawn. I assumed as much. Today was fun and all, but it's probably about time you get some shut-eye. Immediately. Nuh-uh-uh. -uh. No ifs, ands, or buts. We caused chaos, angered some forest spirits, and walked for half a day. So, how about this? I promise I'll be good and behave if you lay down and listen, okay? I'll even be nice and throw in a story to help you sleep. Sounds like a decent deal, yeah? Great. Now, let's get you laying down on the bed and I'll pull up a chair next to you. Don't think I'll get much sleep in for a while, but, you know, it's fine. I'm used to it. Now... Since we have this annoying ceiling covering the stars above, let me bring them closer so they can help you get some rest. Here. What do you think? You like them? Oh, don't worry. They won't burn the house down. They're just little wisps. Now that the mood is set, let me think of a story to help you sleep. Hmm. Ah, I know. When I left the spirit realm, I met someone. Or more like I sensed their presence and called out to them. I figured I could use a friend here, but he vanished soon after, leaving not a trace. Well, except for this. It's written on some weird paper with red and blue lines. i never seen anything like it. The writing's messy. Rushed, even. Like when someone takes notes. Anyway... The story is decent, so we'll go with this. So stare at the wisps, listen to my voice, and close your eyes when you're ready. Wanderers go to and fro, from place to place, but never home, seeking a story, a time, and a place, with need for a hero, a name, and a face. Thus storytellers are begged to tell, stories from which new heroes are born. But what happens then if a bright light shines? A light, a spark, contrast to this otherwise grey work. Should their tale be told, a new hero to humanity's protections would be sworn. By doing so, a new glimmer of hope would bring colour to the world. Another tale told and another satisfied customer, that in time would weep the beauty of light that with time fades. 
another burnt out spark to mourn. So the weaver of words a choice must make to keep or gift the spark away. Both options are selfish in nature, yes, but only one story could be told. And so the teller continued her task, one she would always scorn. To keep her gift the spark away. A particular wanderer arrived one day, a gentle shimmering light, came one night with these words to say, I want you to tell me a tale. The tired storyteller following her routine asked for the name of the new hero who for the last time she would see. However, a smile was followed by these words, magic to the weaver's ears. I want you to tell me the tale of a storyteller, a weaver of words who fulfilled wishes. I want to know how they lived in a small town and loved to make up rhymes as a kid. I want to know how they grew up and decided to pursue their dream and happiness. And once the story reaches the present, I want to stay here and continue seeing it unfold. For I believe a talented storyteller who has given wings to so many dreams deserves to have a friend, a wanderer who stays. And thus, the storyteller went about their work, telling every new wanderer's tale as she had done. And as for the request, that tale hasn't quite reached its end, for a storyteller's job never quite does. Out like a light. Good night, my friend.